Today we're going to have a look at how to create a basic 4-4 eighth note drum groove using GarageBand. Um, what we're going to do to start off with is to click on the track info icon so that we can choose an appropriate drum kit sound. I'm going to select the drum kits category and I'm going to use this IndieKit Live drum kit software instrument. And then what we're going to do is now that I've created that instrument track, I'm going to copy that over so I've got three of those tracks. Shortcut for that is Command, that's the Apple key and D. Or I can do the same thing from the track menu up here. So scrolling down to duplicate track there. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can separately enter kick drum part, snare part, and hi-hat part. They're the three magic parts of the drum kit that create most drum grooves. That's your kick, snare, and hi-hat. Okay, now I've actually created those three parts. What I've then got to do is locate where they are on the keyboard. I'm just going to bring up the keyboard on the screen here so you can see how this relates to the notes that I'm actually going to press on the keyboard. Uh, drum kits are generally what's called mapped across a keyboard so that the different instruments, different aspects of the drum kit can always be triggered from the same notes. For example, if I play this note, C1, you can hear that's a kick drum. If I play E1, that's a snare drum. If I play F sharp 1, you get a closed hi-hat. G sharp one is what's called a pedal hi-hat, that's when you press the hi-hat with your foot. And A sharp one is an open hi-hat. Now these are the key ingredients that we're going to look at to start off with. For us, we're going to start by creating a beat which will be just using the kick drum from C1, the snare from E1, and the closed hi-hat from F sharp one. Okay, to begin with, the first thing I'm going to do is to create the hi-hat pattern. That's going to set the basic pulse for the beat. What I want is a beat that's going to sound something like this. So to do that, to begin with, we need to enter this hi-hat part that's playing consistent eighth note or quavers. I'm going to enter this hi-hat part by actually playing it in what's called real time by playing on the keyboard. Um, to do that, the first thing I've got to do is set the tempo so that it's an appropriate tempo for me to be able to play this part. Now, GarageBand always defaults to a tempo of 120 beats a minute, which is fairly quick. If I just play this through, we've got the metronome on so you'll be able to hear the tempo of the track. So that would mean I want two beats to each of those clicks, which is quite fast. I actually want my groove to be a little bit slower. So what I'm going to do to begin with is click on this button down here, select project, and then I'm going to click on the tempo icon here and drag the slider down so that it's at 100 beats a minute and that's going to make it a little bit easier for me to enter my hi-hat part. So have a listen to that. Okay, I'm just going to practice that first, make sure I've got that right. Okay, that's pretty good. Shortcut for going into record mode is R, so I'm just going to create one bar of those hi-hats. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just make sure that I've got those properly in time. If I double click on this part here, it opens up the editor window down here. If I now make sure that I've clicked within that window, press Command and A, that's the Apple key and A, that will select all the notes that I've just created within that particular region. I'm then going to quantize those and what quantizing will do is it's going to snap each one of those notes to the grid. 
Um, what I want to do is snap it to eighth notes. There, so I'm going to click on that. Now you can see it's just moved each one of those notes so that it's perfectly in line with the grid. If we now have a listen to that, you can hear that that's nice and crisply in time. Great, the next step then is going to be to add my snare drum beats, which are going to be on off beats on beats two and four. Now that I've got those hi-hats in, I don't really need to have the metronome click in all the time, so I'm going to turn that off. Gets on your nerves anyway. Um, if you recall, E1 is where the snare drum is located. So we're going to put that on the off beats like this. Just audition it a couple of times first, make sure that I'm getting it in the right place, and then we're going to record that. This time, I'm going to turn on the counting so I get four beats before the track actually starts playing. Okay, let's have a listen to that. Now again, you can see here, if we look in the editor window down here, that these are fairly close to these lines, but not completely spot on. So again, you can either drag around these two notes to, to select them, or use Command and A when you're inside that window to select all the content within the window. Then I'm gonna go down here and click on eighth note again, just to snap those so that they're neatly in time. Let's have a listen to that. Great. Okay, the final part to add then is our kick drum part. So I'm now going to move down to the third track that we created. And this is going to be on beats one and three and the and of three as well. So I'll just audition that. You can hear what I'm talking about. Great, so I'm going to press R for record, we'll hear four clicks and then I can enter those kick drums. Great, okay, let's have a look down here. Again, they're not perfectly in time and I want them to be as tight as possible, so I'm going to select them all, click on the quantize note timing button and select eighth notes. That's snap them all in time, let's have a listen to that. Fabulous, there we are, I've got my eighth note groove, everything is good.